Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number 148 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Debbie Mack, author of the book The Plank Factor. This novel is about Jessica Evans, who writes a thriller novel with a nightmare scenario based upon actual science, until her research stirs up concern from an extremist group who intends to use it for the wrong reasons. Before long, Jessica is running for her life. Debbie Mack is the New York Times bestselling author of the Sam McRae mystery series. She's also authored a young adult novel and several short stories. Debbie is also a screenwriter who's adapted her first novel for the screen and hopes to make a film. Again, her book is called The Plank Factor. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com 148. So, Debbie, it's such a pleasure to have you as a guest today. My first question is this. What inspired you to write and publish your book? My gosh. Well, the story begins actually quite a while ago, uh, back in the 90s, when I was looking for an agent. And uh, I actually, I guess it was after the turn of the century, I can come to think of it, because my, my first novel in the Sam McRae mystery series had been published by a small press, but was let go. I mean, the publisher went under. So uh, the book went out of print like nine months after it uh, came into being, <laughs> which made it very difficult to sell my series to um, to an agent. Who, they kept saying, write a standalone, write a standalone. So I thought, well, okay. <laughs> so I wrote two standalones, and the second one was The Plank Factor. The Plank Factor, the inspiration for it came to me from watching a uh, a special on – it might have been the science channel or a channel of that of that nature, perhaps a PBS channel, I'm not sure. But um, it was about the scientist who is mentioned in the book who wrote uh, Faster Than the Speed of Light. It was about his research and how he had challenged Einstein's theory. And I was so interested that I decided to read his book. And when I looked at the footnote... It was the footnote that gave me the what if scenario for the uh, for the novel, so that was what prompted me to write it. As far as publishing it goes, um, I didn't have the Sam McRae novel. I had done four at that point, and I had finished my young adult novel, so I decided I would uh, revise the uh, the thriller that I'd written and see if I could pub- self publish that and make a go of it. So. That's how that came into being. That's a great story. I love, I love how you <laughs> took on all those challenges and just kept on going. Fantastic. That's it. Yeah. Um, I am curious. So, is this a young adult novel, or is this for for the grown ups? Blind Factor is. It's for somebody of any age, really. Oh, uh, anybody who can read a thriller who's old enough to read the thriller and appreciate it. It's not specifically young adult. Um, Invisible Me is my young adult novel, and I hope to write, actually, sequels to that one as well. Awesome. How did you come up with the character for uh, for the Plank Factor, Jessica Evans? It's interesting. I, I think a lot of it kind of came to me as a result of knowing people who live in these areas. Um, I wanted... To, uh, I, I came up with that character out of a, a, of a desire to create a person who um, who was not not professional. In other words, in other words, not a professional spy or a professional investigator, but kind of an ordinary person put in, a, in an extraordinary situation. And uh, I think it's because of my uh, uh, fascination with Hitchcock. I've always been a big fan of Hitchcock films and, you know, like North by Northwest, the the ordinary man getting placed in an extraordinary situation, except, except in this case I had an ordinary woman getting placed in an extraordinary situation. And uh, I, I just like those themes. And I guess the reason I picked a, a Boulder grad student is because my, my brother went to uh, school to uh, to the University of Colorado in Boulder, so I was familiar with the area. 
That's awesome. I love it. Um, now, <laughs> what, what I also love about this is that you chose and you chose a woman to be your main character in the story. What made you choose a woman over a man to be the main character? I I have a desire to see more strong female protagonists in fiction. That's pretty much the short answer. Uh, you hear about that a lot. I mean, as far as like Hollywood goes, you know, they're looking for strong female protagonists. So I think I think the more strong female protagonists there are for us to read, the better off we are as a society. I mean, it's just, to me, it just makes sense. You know, we need good role models for women, and I'm hoping that Jessica is a good role model. Absolutely. Sounds like she is. I mean, she sounds, she sounds like a bold character in Boulder. I love it. She's bold and bolder, yes. <laughs> Although she does kind of take it on the road after a while. But, oh. um, it, yeah, she ends up running to, uh, now where did she go? She went to Washington, D.C., and her and the characters that she's writing about goes to New York, which they're both areas that I'm familiar with. Again, geographically, I picked areas that I was familiar with. Yeah, that totally but, makes um, sense. <laughs> yeah. I, I like ha having a sense of place in my novels. If you read my Sam McRae mystery novels, you'll definitely notice that I get into what Maryland is like and what the, the area between D.C. and Baltimore is like specifically. Very cool, very cool. Okay, so the antagonist in the book is an extremist group. Um, I am Correct. curious about that. Like, How did you come up with that idea, an extremist group, and, and who are they and what's motivating them to be so evil? Well, the thing about them is that I, I kind of based it on the generalized um, knowledge that I have about terrorism, quote unquote, in general, in terms of like internal terrorism. And, and we know, you know, that there are people in this country who are not cool, <laughs> who are doing things that uh, some people might say um, are being done by by people overseas, but it's not it's not just them. There are people within our society who try to do things to derail it in, in very very violent ways. So I, that was kind of what I was getting at with that group. It was sort of inspired by you know, the Timothy McVeigh mentality, if you will, the idea of a group who might, say, form a, um, what, what do you call it, like a compound of some sort, getting together and and trying to set themselves apart from society and bring down society at the same time. That was sort of the idea there. It wasn't really inspired by anybody in particular, but just mm -hmm. by what I know about, from reading the papers about some of the people out there who are doing not so cool things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely topical mm -hmm. and current for sure. Brilliant. I love it. Uh, my last question for you, Debbie, is uh, what do you love most about being an author? Oh, well, this is kind of like the, uh, the culmination of a lifelong dream. I think the thing that I love most about it is that uh, I'm able to do what I have genuinely wanted to do all my life. My father was a writer, and he was a playwright, and he was not a successful playwright. He had a few plays produced, maybe a handful, but the fact that I could do this is not only, I think, just a testament how, to how wonderful my parents were and how encouraging my father was in particular, but you know, I'd like to think that He's no longer alive, but I'd like to think that he knows that, that I'm doing this and that he's proud and, you know, that both my parents are proud. So it's both a, a combination of doing this for, for, for them and, and also because I've wanted to do it all my life. And if I can continue to do it, I'll be very, very happy. That has to be one of the best answers I've ever had to that question. 
That was, oh, thank you. That was such a great answer. I love it. Uh, Debbie, thanks again thank for being you. our special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode, and our listeners can find that at shewroteabook.com slash 148 to learn more about our author and her thrilling book. Thanks again, Debbie. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes and feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic.